Hello everyone. Today our topic in virtual memory is demand paging. With demand paged virtual memory, pages are loaded only when they are demanded during program execution. Pages that are never accessed are thus never loaded into physical memory. A demand paging system is similar to a paging system with the swapping, where processes reside in secondary memory, usually a disk. When we want to execute a process, we swap it into memory. But rather than swapping the entire process into memory, we use a lazy swapper. A lazy swapper never swaps a page into memory unless that page will be needed. Another more accurate term for the lazy swapper is a pager. The basic idea here is that when a process swapped in, the pager only loads into memory those pages that it expects the process to need right away. For example, for this process, BI, we have only pages A, B, and F loaded into memory, and the entire process is stored in the backing store. When the pages are loaded into memory, the valid invalid bit in the page table is set to valid, and it is invalid for the other pages that are not in physical memory. If the process only ever accesses pages that are loaded into memory, or we say memory resident pages, then the process runs exactly as if all the pages were loaded into memory. When a page is referenced, the memory address requested is first checked to make sure it was a valid memory request. If the reference was invalid, the process is terminated because of the addressing error. If the reference logical address is valid, then we have to check if the page is in memory or not. If the valid invalid bit is valid, then we continue as usual. The ready frame number from the page table is concatenated with the page offset to obtain the physical number of the reference location. On the other hand, if a page is needed that was not originally loaded up, then a page fault up trap is generated, which must be handled in a series of steps. First, from a pre frame list, a pre frame is located. Next, a disk operation is scheduled to bring in the necessary page from the packing store. This operation usually will block the process on an input-output weight, allowing some other processes to use the CPU in the meantime. When the I.O. operation is complete, by bringing the required page and storing it in the free frame, the process page table should be updated with the new frame number and the valid invalid bit is changed to indicate that this is now a valid page reference. The instruction that caused the page fault must now be restarted from the beginning and this is done as soon as the process gets another turn on the CPU. In an extreme case, no pages are swapped in for a process until they are requested by page faults. This is known as pure demand paging. No pages are swapped in for a process until they are requested by page faults. Again, in brief, if a reference is made to a page which valid invalid bit is valid, then we continue as usual by reading the frame number and concatenating it with the offset to obtain the physical address. If however a reference is made to a page that is not available in memory, then a trap or page fault to the operating system occurs. 
In this case, the operating system should look for a free frame and request a read operation from the backing store to read the required page. And this time, the process may be blocked on I.O. wait, allowing the CPU to switch to another process. After the required page is read from the backing store and stored in the free frame, the page table entries should be updated for this page. Here we store the frame number and we update the valid invalid bit to be valid. The process is waiting for the CPU. After getting the CPU, the instruction is restarted, but now we have the page in memory, so the process continues as usual. We can start executing a process with no pages in memory. When the operating system sets the instruction pointer to the first instruction of the process, which is on a non-memory resident page, the process immediately falls for the page. After this page is brought into memory, the process continues to execute. It falls as necessary until every page that it needs is in memory. And we name this scenario as a pure demand paging. Never bring a page into memory until it is required. This is the extreme case but in practice, part of the process pages are initially loaded into the physical memory, so page faulting will not occur at the initial phases. Next, we'll discuss performance of demand paging. Let me be the probability of a page fault. So as a probability, it's less than or equal to one and greater than or equal to zero and did the access time for memory BMA. The effective access time is computed as follows. If we haven't a page fault, then the effective access time equals to the access time. But if we have a page fault, then it is equal to the page fault time. As I mentioned, the page fault causes the following sequence to occur. A trap to the operating system, save the user registers and the post state, determine the type of the interrupt, in this case, a page fault. Check that the page reference was legal and determine the location of the page on the disk. Issue a read from a disk to the free frame, and this includes waiting in the disk queue. This read operation consists of seek and or latency time and transfer time of the page to a free frame. During this time, the process was blocked in I.O. wait, and the CPU may be allocated to another process. After receiving an interrupt from the disk, I.O. completed. The process now is ready for execution. If the CPU was busy with another process, then after saving the register and the process states for the other process and finding that the interrupt was from the disk, the page table entries are corrected by storing the frame number here and updating the valid invalid bit. When the CPU is allocated to the process, the user register, process state, and the new page table are restored, and we resume the interrupted instruction. So the page for time equals to all these time components. Really, not all of these steps or components are necessary in every case but we should consider three major components. Service the page fault interrupt. Read in the page, which is the swap time for the page, and restart the process. 
with careful coding, the first and the last steps are reduced. So the major component in the page fault time is the swapping time. There are calculations that show that the total paging time is about 8 milliseconds, including both hardware and software times. So if page faulting is a frequent, then the performance of the system will be affected. With an average page fault service time of 8 milliseconds, and a memory access time of 200 nanoseconds. The effective access time in nanoseconds is 1 minus B multiplied by 200 plus B multiplied by 8 milliseconds, which is 8 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 nanoseconds. So the effective access time is directly proportional to the phase fault rate. If one axis out of 1,000 causes a page fault, the effective access time is 8.2 microseconds. The commuter will be slowed down by a factor of 40 because of demand paging. If we want performance degradation to be less than 10%, we need to keep the probability of page faults at the following level or 20 greater than this value multiplied by B or B less than this value. That is, to keep the slowdown due to paging at a reasonable level, we can allow fewer than one memory access out of about 400,000 to page fault. All this means that's important to keep the page fault rate low in a demand page system. Otherwise, the effective access time increases, slowing process execution dramatically. An additional aspect of demand paging is the handling and overall use of swap space. This I.O. swap space is faster than that to the file system. It's a faster file system because swap space is allocated in much larger blocks and file lookups and indirect allocation methods are not used. The system can therefore gain better paging throughput by copying an entire file image into the swap space at process startup and then performing demand paging from the swap space. Another option is to demand pages from the file system initially, but to write the pages to swap space as they are replaced. This approach will ensure that only needed pages are read from the file system, but that all subsequent paging is done from swap space. Some systems attempt to limit the amount of swap space used through demand paging of binary files. Demand pages for such files are brought directly from the file system. For today, that's all. Thank you.